Are you studying for your eLearn Security PTP exam? Or are you just curious about what would be involved in this course? Hi, and welcome to Jason Security. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell for more videos about the cybersecurity industry. So today I will be breaking down the key areas I think you need to prepare for when getting ready to take this exam. This will range from some of the best eLearn security modules and labs, as well as external resources, external tools, and more so as well, just some general advice. If you're here looking for answers for the exam, you're out of luck. But keep watching and you'll be as prepared as you can to pass first try. Okay, so we've got a lot to cover today. So this is a overview of the sections that I will be giving advice on. So firstly, we have the eLearn Security Labs and Modules, which I personally think are the best ones to revise. We have external resources, so articles, blog posts, labs, all that kind of stuff, which will help you do additional research and preparation for the exam. I've got some other just general tech related uh, preparation tips for the exam. And then I have more generalized tips for when you're actually doing the exam. And this is more so, again, just my general advice. So in terms of eLearn security revision, we want to pay special attention to the network security module. This probably made up about 70 to 80% of the course anyway, so it makes sense that you will put most of your revision effort here. So remember your workflow quite well, your scanning, info gathering, enum, exploitation, post exploitation steps and activities, and make sure that you operate your workflow in this particular way. Get really comfortable with the tools and exploits that you use during all the labs and also understand pivoting really, really well. The blind pen test lab was good because after a certain point, there's no more solutions and you're on your own. So I managed to root all three servers in this lab. Uh, so you could probably do it too, even though they don't tell you how. Now for the lads, make sure you do these at least twice especially the ones that you found particularly difficult or the ones that you relied heavily on the solutions. The Linux labs in here are quite good for practicing how to exploit misconfigurations and also the web application security module, while easy, I think is really important to revise and just get really familiar with the different ways you can do web exploits, the tools that's, it, that's involved and all that sort of stuff. Make sure you drill your buffer overflow technique really, really well so you remember this. You can also ignore the Wi-Fi section. This has been publicly stated that it's not in the exam. And you obviously can uh, ignore modules that rely on a third party human being to actually click things or do things as obviously there's not a third party human to do so. So in terms of external resources, I've got a few here which I found quite handy, especially the first one, exploring networks through double pivoting, which I should have just here. So this article was great in showing me how to uh, set up the environment to be able to pivot, how the process works, how logically it works, because it can be a little bit hard to get your head around. So after I read this a few times and understood it, I then went and got about five uh, virtual Windows machines and I set them up. I disabled the firewalls and uh, any virus just so I could make these connections more easily and just set up my pivoting practice this way. And it really got me to understand the differences between say reverse and bind. And it got me being able to understand proxy chains uh, Sox proxy and everything involved within pivoting. This article makes up for, I thought, a rather large deficit within the eLearn security course content about this section, section of pivoting. Next, we have smashing the stack for fun and profit. This is quite an old paper, but it's still relevant today. And I found it quite helpful in understanding what's going on for buffer overflows behind the scene and what's really happening on a technical level. Similarly, the computer file video on buffer overflows was actually really good because they provided a visual repre representation here of how it's done. And if you're a more visual learner like I am, then you will probably find this quite helpful. So in terms of external labs, I've got a couple listed here. 
Firstly, we have buffer overflows, which uh, there is the free float FTP server uh, vulnerable application, which I've got the link in the description. You can download that from exploit DB as well as the vulnerable actual software. And then you can go about it and practice the buffer overflow. There's also much more, especially if you Google something like OSCP buffer overflow preparation. Uh, there's a lot of applications that get listed here and it's pretty good uh, because if you can do buffer overflows on an OSCP level, then doing it on the PTP level will be a piece of cake. There's VulnHub for practice machines that are quite OSCP slash real world like, and obviously there's Hack the Box, which again, can be quite real life. Just make sure you don't do any of the machines that are more CTF like, try to go for the real world CVE type of machines. So while these exploits in all these virtual labs won't be the same as in the exam, obviously, it will help you understand the workflow. It will test your patience and really uh, try to make you a bit more resilient for, so you're prepared for the actual exam. So some general preparation tips for getting things ready for the exam. Make sure you do your own cheat sheet. So I did one which I did in Excel and it was great for consolidating all the information throughout the course into one central place. So do it in a way that makes sense for you, obviously. But for me, I did a section on buffer overflows, scanning, remote enumeration, preservation, exploitation, privilege escalation, uh, local enumeration, etc. You see everything there. This was really good because it really got me consolidating the entire course material into just a few pages on Excel. As I mentioned, it's a good idea to do the labs twice, especially if you re heavily relied on the solutions. Understanding Metasploit is also really helpful, especially getting to know things like the advanced parameters for exploitations, as well as understanding shortcut keys, which will just make your life so much easier. Again, I must reiterate, understand your buffer overflows really, really, really well, and practice things more than just say a reverse or bind TCP. Maybe try spawning a notepad or a calculator or both. Uh, just keep practicing this a lot and think outside the box. Get all the tools you used throughout the course ready and in a space that makes sense for you. And obviously don't do a disk upgrade before you start the exam. I had a friend who did this before the exam. He didn't take a snapshot and he had to spend so much time getting his VM back to where it should be. So on the topic of snapshots, make sure you take a snapshot just in case anything happens. And lastly, don't go down too many rabbit holes too quickly. Make sure you do thorough enumeration uh, and things should be pretty obvious to you quite quickly. Now onto some general advice for the exam. I think it's best if you take a whole week off work when doing this exam and to start maybe on a Thursday. The reason for a Thursday is that you have both Thursday and Friday to really get started and knuckle down. You have the weekend and then you have another three days to finish off. If you finish early, then you can go back to work or start your lab report early. Now, before you start the exam, make sure you go out and you buy plenty of healthy snacks and some pre-made meals just so you don't get too distracted and you can focus more so on your actual exam. So you might be wondering how to structure your day when doing this exam. Now I know everybody's different, some people have kids, you might not be able to get the time off work, but this is what I did. I'd wake up probably around 7 to 7.30 a.m. and make sure that I had a big healthy breakfast and then sit down to my computer at about maybe about 8.30 with a double shot of coffee in hand. Now I'd work till about lunchtime whenever I really started to feel hungry, probably around 12.30 in which I'd take almost a two hour break. And in that break, I would have some lunch. I'd watch some TV and I watched The Simpsons just because it was easy just to tune out and escape from doing the exam. And then I'd actually take a nap. Food coma aside, I think taking a nap just really helped me relax and get me prepared to take on the next half of the day. So I'd sit back down to my computer probably around 2, 2.30 and keep working until I, again, I felt hungry around dinner time. In which case, again, a pre-made meal followed by watching an episode of The Simpsons and then straight back onto the computer 
for another few hours until I started to run out of steam. This would usually be about 10.30 to 12 o'clock. I also recommend throughout the day, trying to find little opportunities where you can go on 10 to 15 minute walks just to get some fresh air and stretch your legs. I can't stress how important it is to go outside and take a walk even a little bit longer, especially if you're stuck. Going outside, listening to the birds, looking at the trees, getting the fresh air will just help you relax so much more and your creative side of the brain will start to engage a bit more. And this might lead to breakthroughs in potential areas that you might be stuck in and you probably will get stuck at some point. Well guys, I hope you found that exam preparation guide helpful. If you did, hit that like button. It really helps me out to let me know you're enjoying the content. And most importantly, good luck on your exam. I hope you smash it first try. Feel free to leave a comment if you've got any more questions, but remember to keep them spoiler free. And before you go, I have more eLearn security related content. Click up here for my course review of the PTP exam and click up here for my exam preparation guide for the EWPTX. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next one.